Today's project is making a garden gate. So I was putting up this dispense around my garden so that I could keep my chickens from destroying my garden and I needed a gate. So I built me a gate. This way I can let the chickens roam free and they can scratch around the forest and not get into my garden. The gate is made out of weather treated wood and backed by chicken wire. The chickens have um, two large pens and a small pen. Um, I have a pen on three sides of the coop because I let them out sometimes. I open up the door and let them wander around the forest, scrounging under the leaves for. <laughs> um, and they're pretty content. They but um, I don't want them to get into my garden. And I want them to have freedom. I want them to have um, more opportunities to scratch up bugs. So that's why, that's why the gate's going up around the garden, to give them a little more freedom. For this project, we need a 2x4 that has been weatherproofed. And a, it's called a 2x2, two two, but it's actually about an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter. That's the, we only need one of each to make this fence and we're going to put it together with galvanized nails, three inch nails. And I'm also going to use these um, little L hooks. They're only like 58 cents a piece. And we're also going to be using screws. So we need a drill for that. Of course we need a hammer. And when we put the chicken wire on, we're going to apply them with these galvanized U hooks and because we're gonna have to cut the wood it's it's weatherproofed but we're gonna cut it so that's gonna expose the inside of the wood so we need some weatherproofing and this project is less than 10 bucks to make a garden gate to attach the gate we need two hinges and a hook that um, to close the gate First thing we have to do is measure the opening and my opening is 44 and a half inches wide and four feet high. So now we can mark our wood and get started. First I mark the wood. I like to use my T-square so that way um, I have a right angle right here so I know my line is straight. four feet tall. Um, I have here my top and my bottom and so I want this the length to be four feet including the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna put those together at the end and we measure out four feet and mark it. flat surface is great because it'll help me to keep my boards um, flush. That's why it's great to have a table. Um, I want to put this in here and I could put it so it's laying on the table but I actually don't want it to be right on the edge so I'm going to bring it up a little bit. This is um, pine wood so it's soft. I can take my, my um, screw and I can just kind of shove it in just a little bit. side and 
one on the other. Okay, I have my main frame together. It's just held together with those L brackets, but this is gonna be outdoors in the weather and the, and the rain and stuff, and um, I wanna make sure it's solid. So I'm gonna use galvanized nails, five nails down and through. This will make it much more solid um, rather than, I don't wanna just rely on, it's only connected right there. So I definitely wanna strengthen it. The reason we use galvanize is it's not gonna rust. Um, when I get my board, and I think I have it in the right position, I always like to drop my board without the power on to make sure that my blade's going to fall in the right place. This is the side of the board that I have measured. So this is the board I want. So I want my blade on this side of the line, like right next to it. You don't want to cut on the line because that will actually make it shorter because the width of the blade is going to take up a little bit of space. So always know which side you want. If I wanted that side, I'd want my blade on this side of the line. But since this is the piece I want, the blade's going to be on that side. I make sure my blade's in the right place before I turn it on and always put on safety glass. Okay. Now, I want to evenly space them, so I want to measure. Okay, so it's 11, 12, 11. That balances it out. It's okay if it's an extra inch in here. Of course, we always double check before we make a mark. In case we're slightly off. put two nails because if I just put one the board would twist so I want two nails These are the hinges that I'm going to use to put it on, and I'm going to put two hinges about 10 inches from the top, 10 inches from the bottom, um, but you can see that there's nothing to screw it into. So this is where, this is where the design comes in. So I'm going to cut my long board, and I'm going to have a board going across like this so that I've got something to screw into. So that's the purpose of 
this board here. First of all, I'm going to mark it uh, right where I'm going to put it. 10 inches, 10 inches. Okay, so right here, just make sure it's just a hair less than 11, okay? This is not as high as that. That's why I want everything on the back side there to be flush with the table um, because that's the side that I'm going to put the chicken wire on. So I push that all the way down. There is a gap here and here, and that's fine. As long as one side is completely flat. And that will make it, and the hinges will also go on the side with the chicken wire. So that will allow me to have something to screw to. Obviously, if you see, you can't go here because of that. It'll, the hinge will go on the, the side with the chicken wire. Okay, the challenge, I got it nailed in on this side because this is only less than, it's probably an inch and a half or something like that. But the nails are going to be too short and that's a long way to go anyways. Um, I'm going to use screws to come in at an angle, but the problem is I'm going to be putting pressure this way and I don't want to bend the board that way. So what I did is I temporarily stuck these in here to keep that mark. That way I have complete resistance and I can screw the screw in there. And then I just knock these out. They're just they're temporary, but that's just helped hold it so that that is secure. And I'll do that on each of the four corners. And for the center, I have these two by fours just to kind of help give me some resistance so I can put the screw in at that end going to be centered between the top and the bottom. Because I'm at an odd angle having to stretch over, I decided to go ahead and start the screws ahead of time. That way, I already got it in there at the angle. I painted the weatherproofing on with a brush and let it sit overnight. Well, it's all weatherproofed and I let it um, dry overnight. So this morning I am putting the chicken wire on to complete this little project. This uh, gate really only took just a few hours to do. going to bend these little points and because with it being the outside of the gate you don't want those little sharp points sticking out it'll catch clothes or catch skin cut somebody so I'm just folding them all back put the close enough together that we don't have any gaps. Now my chicken wire only came up this far so I had to add another piece. Um, I'm overlapping it. 
about three or four inches. So I'm just cutting off the, the extra. And um, because it's overlapped and there's little sharp points, I'm going to try to fold the sharp ends underneath. This is going to be the chicken side where the where the chicken wire is, and because I don't want them to have these little boards to be able to climb up on it, jump over the fence. I want to um, fold these little points under so that they won't be a danger to the chicken. But for safety reasons, I'm also going to put this be the top of the fence and that be the bottom because there's less likely for them from harm to come to them. Believe me, if there's a danger to chickens, they will find it. I have sometimes had to rescue chickens and they get into precarious situations. So I do try to bend over these sharp wires and try to keep them so that they'll be in a safe place. And I don't want any little sharp points sticking out for, you know, anybody else that may encounter grandkids or myself. I am forever destroying my clothes, so um, I know that if there's something sticking out, it's going to get caught. So I'll use my needle nose wire, uh, pliers and I'll try to work those little ends in and around so that they will, cannot do damage. Try to work it as much as I can so we don't have any little sharp points sticking out. Always got to think safety. The fence is done, so now it's time to put the hinges in. I want the, um, the hinge to be outside the edge here. Um, there are three, three places to put the screw. Put the screw, you know, make sure that it's going to clear the ground if you need to do something different with the ground. Put the screw in the center of the bottom and the top and make sure your door is going to be able to swing freely before you put the rest of the screws in. garden gate. Now my chickens can have more freedom. So now I have two garden gates. This one leads to the house. This is the one that will be used most often. It also, there's my chicken coop over there. And the other goes to the burn pile. So we need to haul stuff to our burn pile. So that was pretty easy to